the Zenfone 9. So I got these devices in a few weeks ago, and these are classic Zenfone. It's got a powerful chip, a huge battery. These are now at 4,300 milliamp hour batteries. Like it's, I think the biggest sized battery I've ever seen in a device this size. Uh, it still keeps the headphone jack, and it also keeps the compact form factor. 5.9 inch display, fits nicely in your hand. It's a very impressive set of hardware, but nothing's perfect in this tech world, right? Okay, so when you pop it open, you get a 30 watt charger. So this is a relatively fast charger for, again, a device this size, but it also comes with a case. It's a fairly sturdy case and it fits nicely on these devices. Okay, it comes in four colors. The red they call sunset red. There's starry blue, which is the favorite of my bunch. And then there's midnight black. And all three of these have a black anodized aluminum frame. And then the white, or they call it like moonlight white, but it's more of like a beige color. Uh, this has a silver frame. But all four of these devices have a plastic back, which is very nice to touch. So it's not like a rubbery material. It's just got this soft touch rubber-like texture to it. Um, it's not squishy. Like if you press down on it, it doesn't squish in. It's, I think it's just hard plastic with a nice coating on it, but this is a very durable finish and I like it. Now the fingerprint sensor is located on the side and it's quick, it's like uh, it's very snappy getting in. But this year they have a feature that gives it touch sensitivity. So you can scroll up and down on it without touching your screen or you can use it to launch custom apps or you can use it to launch like a voice to text feature. So you can, you know, double tap it. And be like, hey, make sure at tomorrow's meeting you don't bring peanuts because the dude's allergic to it. And it'll post it into like a notes app or whatever you're using to uh, like record a quick note. So I popped it open because I wanted to see the battery. There's still no wireless charging, but the battery is big. It's 4,300 milliamp hours, but it's not just like the kind of size, the footprint of it. It's also a thicker battery than normal. And I think because of the slightly thicker battery, they've made the whole device ever so slightly thicker. It's still lightweight, 169 grams, I believe. And this kind of battery to weight ratio is quite rare. I think the Pixel 5 is close, but big battery in a small phone. Now battery life is quite good. I was getting eight to 10 hours of screen on time, depending on how hard I was pushing it. It's not quite the two day battery that Asus is claiming. I'd say this is like a very comfortable full day battery, uh, but charging speed is also quite good. So again, 30 watt charger, but normally on small phones like this, you can't pump that kind of wattage into it. This can do it because they have some tech that can handle the higher wattage. And there's also software features built in that help to extend the longevity of the battery life. So you can lower the like kind of full charge capacity as well as adjust the wattage that's being pumped into it while it's being charged. But they have hardware and software features to kind of give that battery the best life possible. The screen on this year's Zenfone is really nice, but I don't think it's much different from the previous generation. So it's still 120 Hertz, uh, 400 nit brightness indoors. If you go outdoors, it's like 800. And if you're watching HDR content, it'll pump up to 1100 in certain spots. Beautiful screen. It also has this nice feature. It's not really a feature, a characteristic where if you can, if you dim it down, it gets like really dim. The camera's probably not picking it up, but it's like the screen's still on. It's, if you're using it at night and you want those dim screens, you're not like blowing out your eyes. This is a wonderful screen. A lot of Asus screens can do it. And it's also got some nice sounding speakers on this device, but there's some thicker bezels on the top and bottom. Now the camera system, the main camera is using a Sony IMX 766. The ultra wide is the IMX 363. These are both mid range sensors. The main camera is pretty good, but if I had one complaint, it's that it's not particularly consistent with exposure. So sometimes it's overexposing, sometimes it's underexposing, and it's for no particular reason. Like some of these shots aren't difficult. It just messes up the exposure. Uh, the ultra wide is decent. It's good when there's a lot of light, but it's not great in low light or if you're trying to catch a shot quickly. The front camera is very good though. It's sharp and it's quite consistent. Now in terms of performance, so this is running the new Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. It's their top of the line chip. Uh, great performer in terms of just benchmarks as well as energy efficiency. It is weird to me though that they put such a powerful chip into this phone. Like it's a smaller device and it's got smaller surface area. So to cool the chip, you now have to do a lot of stuff. Like you have to put extra thermal material in it. There's considerations because it's got such a small form factor. Now they've done a good job, like considering all the complexities of working in such a small space, but there's a cost. It's the financial cost. This is so much more expensive than last year's Zenfone 8. So this, is a $799 phone at the base model. Now I understand there's inflation in the world, like tech products are costing more, uh, and this has better hardware, like better camera system, a bigger battery. There's definitely more stuff in this year's product than last year, 
but a $200 price increase in one year, whew, it's steep. And I think a big chunk of that price increase comes from this Snapdragon chip. Now, I would argue that on a device like this, because it's a smaller phone, you don't need to throw in the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. This is like literally top of the line chip. I would have liked to have seen like the Snapdragon 7, right? The It's a newer chip, lower power, lower everything. It would have been cheaper and this wouldn't be an $800 phone. Now, I think the reason why they can kind of get away with it though still is that there's nothing else quite like this. Like if you were someone that used the Pixel 5 or like any of the smaller phones, there are very few alternatives in the Android space. And I think that if they had put a mid-range chip in here and made it like a 600 or $650 phone, it would have been much more popular. Uh, but we have a $800 phone this year. Now, another thing of concern is the software support. So Asus is providing two plus years of guaranteed software updates and they've put two plus because I think it's, it's variable, right? I think if this thing is very popular and it sells well, I think they would extend it beyond the two years. But in the uh, in the case that it doesn't sell well, I think it just cuts off at two years. Now, I think that's way too short. I feel like on a device like this, especially this kind of price point, it's got to be minimum three, ideally four. Uh, and it's just it's actually kind of weird to see two years of support on this. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is like people who aren't tech enthusiasts, like people that aren't watching this kind of video, I don't think they care about it. I realize I've, I've at least come to terms that most people don't care about extended software support after a few years. Like they just use their device and they just stick with it and it's it's cool. Uh, but for the nerds like me, it's like, what the heck, man? Two years, that's it? But that's how it rolls this year. Uh, okay, there you have it, Zenfone 9.